Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Thursday. Hashtag my global family. This is Drea Beta, coyote walking in this world of real life, a slot of public superhero, proud to spirit indigenous warrior. I'm on a mission to transform this world of my ancestors' family from my ancestors. My gammy sent me here <laughs> to catch trouble family and to fight injustice. I literally define warrior advocacy every single day as a survivor of trauma multiple, multiple times over family, including rape and molestation as a ramification of any boarding schools, police brutality in 2008 for asking a cop for his name and badge number during a racialized traffic stop. I got PTSD family because he decided to throw his power around and arrest me. So I fought the system family. I would say my lawyers got seven grand. I got two and ended up with PTSD, but he no longer had a position. Woohoo! In addition, family in 2018, I took out a white male academic predator who was sleeping with his students and was a witness in a sexual harassment suit family. We pushed him out of the university and he's no longer there to hurt anyone else. In addition, family, I have faced police not once, but twice in the last two years as my role as an international graduate student leader. I brought $187,000 worth of value to the College of Education, as well as the students that I represented as the chair of the AERA GSC last year. I also lost 110 pounds in 2017 and train and compete in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm basically a badass family on a mission to research, teach, and coach other people with disabilities or marginalized identities like this coyote to take over the world. I'm telling you, family, if you walk through this world slightly differently, Right. I am two spirited. I have a male self and a female self. I am bisexual, which means I find all people beautiful. I also family am a survivor of trauma, have been diagnosed with PTSD, anxiety, depression, and sometimes I'll have a panic attack and be stuck in my room for three days. So I'm just saying family, COVID is still affecting all of our minds, our bodies, our families, everything. There's a lot going on. There's inflation. There's a rise in gas prices, rise in everything. And you know what, family? It's not like they need to rise the price. They need to raise the prices. What they're doing is they're padding um, their shareholders, right? They need to make record profits. Corporations still need to make record profits because they don't care about people. They care about making money. And unfortunately, family, we are the sheep being uh, being sold a bad deal. So I'm saying, family, join me in fighting the oligarchs that rule our society and start a revolution. Hashtag Pueblo Revolt forever. <laughs> All right, family, I'm sorry. I'm super late today. I am late by like, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, who knows. But that's okay, family. We're going to go ahead and get started on our yoga. Don't forget, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do a beginner yoga on the floor. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> Let's do this. Taking my vape pen to the floor, family. Always bring a vape. <laughs> that is definitely my motto. Let's bring your ready, my darling friend. Let's begin today's practice in extended child's pose. So if extended child's pose is not awesome for you, you can just start today's practice in a nice, comfortable seat of your choice. Benji has selected this shape. You can select your shape to really just get comfortable and find your breath and tune in because today's practice is of course an invitation to really look at the ways in which we might be stressed and Stress, understand and remember that we always have an opportunity to tend to that, to circle back to that awareness and eventually to heal from that so that we don't um, get really sick. Okay. But let's not worry about all that for now. Let's start with just tuning into the breath in an effort to bring more loving awareness to our life. Shall we? In your comfortable seat, in your Benji pose, or if you want to join me in extended child's pose, take a second to get settled in. And once you're there, right away, 
bring your awareness or your attention to your breath. And really, don't skimp out on yourself uh, here. Right away, listen. What's it like today? Is the breath shallow? Is it hard? Remarkably, sometimes it's hard to breathe. And let this invitation to focus inward on your breath, let it do its thing. Invite more presence into the body by allowing one moment to simply bleed into the next. So you start by noticing the quality of your breath, but then that might inspire you to reach the arms a little wider to notice if you feel a bit tired, to notice if you actually wanted like a fiery practice today, but you find yourself here, maybe you can trust that you might need this too. Now gently begin to deepen the breath. Notice the thoughts that come up here. And you know what to do, but I'll just remind you as those thoughts come up, because they will, it's just a matter of if it's five times or 500 times in our practice here today, as the thoughts come up, acknowledge them, notice them, and then return back to your breath. And that's the dance that we'll practice that's the dance that we aim to get good at. Continue to gently deepen your breath. Notice how you feel. Is there love in your heart today? Or are you tender hearted? And yes, of course you can be both. And if you're like, I just wanna chill my nervous system, get a nice little stretch in, that's great too. Wherever you are, take one more cycle of breath to really land. And then slowly, We'll carve a line with the nose to look forward and ever so slowly press into the tops of the feet and from your heart, lift forward. Walk the knees underneath the chest. I said chest, walk the knees underneath the hips. Sorry, I got distracted because what I wanted to tell you was after you walk the knees underneath your hips, carve a line with your nose to look to the screen and look at Benji's paw in my hand. All right, now bring your gaze straight down. Spread the fingertips evenly. Walk your wrists underneath your shoulders. Let's move with the breath. So synchronize the breath with the movement, the movement with the breath here. As you inhale, drop the belly, open the chest, look forward. Broaden through the back of the neck, so careful not to crunch. And then exhale, round through the spine, chin to chest. Really create a contraction in the center of your being as you broaden through the upper back body. Let the neck kind of hang here, the head be heavy. And then here we go, on an inhale, drop the belly, open the chest, let your heart open forward, forward, forward. And then exhale, tailbone goes down, chin to chest, breathe out. Inhale, drop the belly. Exhale, round. Inhale, claw through the fingertips, open the chest. Exhale, claw through the fingertips, navel draws up. Inhale, last time, drop the belly. Exhale, chin to chest. And now just take it off the railroad tracks a little bit here, bumping the hips a little left to right, finding a soft or generous bend in your elbow. Checking in with your hips 
your shoulders, just kind of going freestyle a little bit here today and see if you can soften your gaze and start to move with the sound of your breath. You can curl the toes under here, check in with the feet, check in with the neck. Get a little freaky here. Find what feels good. And then bring it back to tabletop position, nice neutral spine. And we're gonna slowly press the left foot into the ground, curl the right toes under and send the right toes out. Right heel really reaches, extends back, and you're gonna work to press into your right pinky toe so that your right ball and socket can really get snugly here, right thigh bone, femur down towards the ground. Then rock front and rock back, rock front and rock back. Then the next time you rock front, you're gonna drop your elbows exactly where your hands are, interlace, hands were, then interlace the fingertips out in front. So now I'm on my forearms. Good. You're gonna lift the right toes now, bend the right knee, press into your left foot firmly. Careful not to collapse into the shoulders here. And then baby pulses here with the right foot up towards the sky, breathing deep. Baby pulses. Gaze straight down, lifting the right knee, waking up the body so we're building a little bit of heat but nice and low to the ground mindfully here today. Take a deep breath in, long breath out one more time, big breath in. Long breath out, release. Knee comes underneath the hip. We'll press back up to tabletop position. Press into your right foot, curl your left toes under and send your left leg out. Rock front, rock back. See if you can bring your low belly in just a bit. Hug your low ribs in, so finding that center. Stretching through the fascia of the foot, the Achilles, the calf. Upper arm bones rotate out, so creating space between the ears and the shoulders working to create a whole body awareness. Then the next time you rock front, connect to your center, draw the low belly in, drop your elbows where the hands were, interlace the fingertips, this time opposite thumb on top, the one that feels kind of funky. Then you're gonna press up and out of your foundation here. I'm pressing into both elbows evenly. So there's there may be a tendency to rock on your Right side, see if you can hug the midline. We'll lift the left toes, bend the left knee, and find baby pulses. Yes, this is good for your booty. Yes, this is good for your core, but we're trying to create a full body experience, right? 100% full body experience. So tuck your chin, refine, press into both knees evenly. Find your breath. If you get thrown off balance, return to the breath. Welcoming that heat. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Good, release, pop back up to the hands, bump the hips to your left, turn to look past your right, sh uh, right shoulder, yes. <laughs> come back to center, bump the hips to the right, turn to look past your left shoulder. Sweet, come back to center, Place the hands mindfully, spread the fingertips evenly, index fingers pointing towards the front edge of the mat, claw through your knuckles. Here we go, curl the toes under, deep breath in. With your exhale, peel the tailbone up towards the sky, downward facing dog. Find what feels good here, breathe deep. Close your eyes, let any stress, tension melt down the back as you continue to firmly press through your hands, working from the ground up here. Let it go, family. Let it all go. <laughs> Inhale in. On your next exhale, find stillness. And then slowly release to the ground. Awesome. Walk your knees up just a bit. Cross one ankle over the other. We're going to come through all the way to a nice uh, flat back position. So come on to your back. We'll join Benji here. Excellent. And when you're ready, we're going to plant the palms <clears throat> and slowly lift the right leg up high to the sky. Good. Bend your right knee, squeeze it up towards the chest. Breathe. And take your right hand. You're going to grab either your left shin, calf, excuse me, right shin, calf, right ankle, or right big toe. 
you want to use a blanket or a strap, even a dish towel works great here, you can. We're going to inhale, start to kick the right toes out towards the right side of your yoga mat. Use your left hand on the ground or on your left rib cage to slowly, slowly keep a mindfulness in the left hip. So we're opening up here. You can use a strap, you can use a towel, you can um, clasp the big toe if you can. If not, just make it your own. We wanna just play a little bit here. You don't have to master the shape. Again, keep a nice firm awareness in the left thigh bone, left hip. Flex your left toes up towards the sky. And then slowly bring it back over. We're gonna squeeze the right knee up towards the chest once again, and then cross it over the body, supine twist. Breathe deep here, close your eyes, relax your jaw. And slowly come back to center, extend the right leg out, bring your hands, excuse me, extend both legs out, bring your hands back to the earth, and then keep the right leg extended uh, as you bring the left leg up. Hug the left knee into the chest. Breathe. And then here we go, grabbing the left shin or calf, the left ankle, maybe grabbing that big toe or using a towel, a tie, or a strap. We'll start to extend left toes out, up and out. My leg does not like that. <laughs> Breathe deep here. Try to keep your shoulders on the ground. And then slowly reeling it all back into center. Keep the right leg extended. And here we go, crossing the left leg across the body, finding your supine twist here. Breathe deep. Inhale in, exhale to slowly melt it back to center. From here, you're gonna cross, you're gonna hug the knees into the chest, cross the ankles, grab the outer edges of the feet, and we're gonna rock all the way up to a seat again. Send the legs out long, Paschimottanasana. So here's where you might wanna grab your uh, pillow. Hike the edge of your pillow all the way up to your hip creases. Bend your knees generously. And if you want to use. Sorry, family, I forgot to tell you to bring a pillow <laughs> under this. Go get your pillow. Go get your pillow. Did you get it? Did you get it? Hold on, let me go get my. Uh, 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 I haven't been doing yoga, family. I'll be honest. I haven't been doing my yoga like I normally do. I try. I try to do my yoga like every day in the evening after I get back from jujitsu. It's been a really rough family. So I feel like I'm creaking everywhere, <laughs> I'm popping everything, but that's okay. Let's just give it a try. Don't forget, get your pillow, get your pillow. So Thursdays, let's bring a pillow to class, okay? <laughs> I love you. La 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 la. More than one pillow you can really um, bringing the earth up to you to rest your forehead. All right, inhale in, reach for the sky. Exhale, draping forward, Pashit Motanasana. Start with a nice bent knee, toes up towards the sky, heels in line with the hips to start. If you wanna work to bring the feet together, um, that's up to you. I'm gonna go feet hip width apart, inhale. Everyone look forward, exhale to melt into the posture. So there's going to come a point here where you want to get out. See if you can layer in a depth of breath here, layer in the breath, instead of coming out of the posture. See what happens. Pay attention to that moment between the inhalation and the exhalation here. Soften the skin of the forehead. Lean in.
Check it out. Take five more breaths here. Count them out. Relax your shoulders. To come out of the pose, move slow. Keep the feet and the legs active. Root down through your sits bones and with soft fingers, tuck the chin and slowly roll it back up. Bring the hands together at your heart, Anjali Mudra, and just notice how you feel here, Dandasana, toes up towards the sky. Inhale in, exhale, bring your fingertips or your palms down to the earth. And just a couple seconds here to find soft, easy movement in the neck. Cool. Grab your pillow, as we say in Texas. Grab your pillow. You're going to come on to one side, your favorite side. If you have an extra pillow here, you can grab it and use it for your head or your neck. But your main pillow is going to go between your legs. Get comfy. So set yourself up for support here for our final posture, a little relaxation. When you're ready, close your eyes. Lift the corners of the mouth slightly. And once again, bring your awareness to your breath. Allow your breath to soften and just return to its natural rhythm, its natural flow here. Notice if you might be holding or clenching anywhere in the body, see if you can soften and relax that too. If it's bright in your space and you want to bring your top arm over to cover the eyes, you can do that here. And just take a second here to chill. And if you're already thinking about your next meal, or your next task, or your next to-do list item, that's totally normal. But that's what we want to kind of get at here today. Just notice if that's happening, return back to your breath. Choose to stick it out with me here on the video and with Benji. Commit to your practice. If you're feeling good here and you have nowhere to be next, you might pause the video and stay here for a little bit longer. If you're ready to rock and roll, let's slowly take a deep breath in. Use the top arm to press into the earth, bottom arm to press our body is all the way back up. Move your pillow to the side. Bring your hands together at the heart space. Take one final loving inhale in through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. Inhale to draw the thumbs up to the third eye and exhale to bow. Thanks everyone. Namaste. Namaste. Yay. Family, how are you feeling? <laughs> ah. I feel like I need a few moments <laughs> of Zen every single day, right? I feel like I need it. I need a family. I need to stretch. So I've lost 110 pounds. Um, that's probably like 115, give or take. I've also put in a lot more muscle. A lot more muscle family. I'm for real. I'm putting on muscle. It's cool. It's for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu family. I was getting creamed. <laughs> um, the wonderful sisters that I roll with are mm, two to three inches taller than I am. And one of them's got 40 pounds of muscle on me. No joke, like 40 pounds of solid muscle. Um, so how can I possibly compete with taller, bigger, and stronger people? 
this coyote's got to get faster, flexible, and stronger myself. So, after being choked out for a minute, I decided I was going to do something about it. So, yeah, family, I have been pumping iron. I've been... Um, I've been haven't been doing as many as much cardio. I'll be honest. It takes a really long time to weight lift. It takes me two and a half to three hours, and I go five times a week, and that's only five machines and a warm up and a cool down, and a little bit of cardio, a mile of cardio. And that's it. It takes two and a half three hours, so that's dedication, family. Um, I am here to transform the world and transform my body, and I give a lot of advice. I'm a published author. I'm a researcher. I literally am a leader that says this is what we should do and so i always hear my auntie's voice in the back of my head and saying well how are you role modeling that right what are you doing um and why should people follow you right so everyday family i role model what's possible hoping to inspire and share my stories with having a disability ptsd crippling anxiety attacks family um and being a survivor of trauma so many times uh, 10 cases to the office of CEO at different universities in different states, helping defend and protect my community. So I'm just saying, family, join me in the revolution. <laughs> in addition to being a published author and Ivy League graduate, a researcher, a critical race, whiteness, intersectional scholar, I've done 52 academic presentations, family, I've fulfilled 48 leadership roles in the last six years, about $187,000 of value to my community, had my book check come out last year, family, and published three articles in top journals, highlighting my work with a youth group called Loud, which is formerly incarcerated, mostly LGBT, who went against the system, family, these youth literally were telling state legislatures, you need to do this to um, improve our lives and to implement policy that's humanizing to us. They inspired me to be a revolutionary activist family and this coyote never looked back. <laughs> so join me in the role modeling what's possible. All right, family, and I apologize in advance. You're gonna be getting a whole bunch of pictures from my conference. I finally have the emotional and mental energy and time <laughs> to get that done. So I love you. Sorry in advance. <laughs> I'm also pastor and coyote of Coyote Lodge, House of Spirituality, Critical Race Theory, and Medical Marijuana. Our services are every other Wednesday, family. Every Wednesday was too much for this coyote. I need to take a break sometimes, so I'm creating humanizing change for myself. So join us next Wednesday, family. We did have church service last Wednesday, so if you want to take a look at that, all of my videos are also available on YouTube. Yummy, yeah, it's your favorite trickster coyote grandchild. And I'm here, you know, causing trouble. <laughs> Just kidding. Gammy, honestly, today our special prayer is for strength. Because honestly, it's only Thursday and I already feel worn out. <laughs> so I don't know about you, family, but I could use a little pep in my step and some strength. Right? Is it fortitude of heart we need? Is it our mind and our balance? Is it physical strength to actually literally get through the week? Whatever it is, family, let's ask our ancestors for their guidance and help. Gammy, I know you were the strongest woman that I knew. You were a warrior for your your people, for your family. Seriously, my Gammy was one of the top five scariest women on the res. I'll be honest. <laughs> but to me, she was everything love and kindness. And she spoiled this little coyote because she taught me um, confidence. She taught me love and she was strong. She was bold. My Gammy, you didn't tell her what to do. She forged her own path. So Gammy, lend us some of your strength. Look down at us from wherever you are watching our adventures, laughing away and send us some guidance. Because you know what? Sometimes it's hard to be strong. Sometimes you get beaten down by this world, Gammy. And you knew your whole life was a huge struggle as a Pueblo woman to try to find safety and security for all of your children. So send us such strength, Gammy, because you are amazing. I love you and may you rest in peace. And to my papa family, now my papa, he was the epitome of love and kindness. Papa, I love you, and today our prayer is for strength. And since you're my specialty for helping us find the spaces and people who love and care for us, may we also find those people who are going to lift us up when we need it. Papa, I love you so much. I miss you. I hope the cable's good up there. <laughs> Send us your blessings as we continue to cause trouble. And to my great-great-grandfather, Pablo Beta, true revolutionary and a slut of Pueblo statesman. 
whew, these institutions, Papa, they're beating down the people. They're changing the rules and they're blaming us for not being able to meet the ever moving standards. It's ridiculous, Papa. And we're tired and we're worn out. So send us those warriors, send us that strength and send us those people who are gonna help us fight against these institutions to create humanizing change for our children and for our communities. And to all of our aunties, uncles, gammies, papas, cousins, those we have adopted in our hearts through love and those we're related to by blood, send us your blessings and your wisdom as we ask for this prayer of strength. Are you ready for Tuesday, Thursday, family? Are you ready for Thursday? See, I don't even know what day of the week it is. I don't know what day of the week it is, but that's okay because I got my stuff done this morning, family. I've been struggling. Tuesday, I'm still so pissed off about Tuesday, family. I keep writing all these really mean emails on my brain, and I'm like, no, don't send that email. Don't send that email. <laughs> and I, I counsel a lot of people, family, and I help a lot of people through traumatic experiences, and I support people, and that's what my consulting group officially will do um, as soon as I get the paperwork done in the next couple of weeks. Um, And so while I'm being all pissed off in my brain, right? Someone insulted my work. They insulted my dissertation project. They insulted my vlogs. They said, uh, you can see it in their face, right? I, I ripped it down because there's no one who's gonna tell me that videos are not an authentic expression and that it's not just as valid as journaling. In fact, it's more valid. I'm a survivor of trauma because I went against a white male academic predator. Um, I hated writing, I hated academia, I hated research. I was crippled and could not write for about four years, maybe three years. And it's still a struggle for me to write now, family. So for me to journal every day would have been impossible. Throughout COVID, especially with all the stress going on, especially with everything on our plate, especially with facing down police twice in the last two years during my role in protest as an advocate and an international graduate student leader, hell no, I couldn't journal. If I can't write, how am I supposed to journal every day during a period of trauma? Now, making a video, crying, talking about what's hitting me in the moment right then and there. Because let's talk about writing, right? So the idea is that the academic writing is better than video, right? And that's because what? Because of TikTok, because of YouTube. Because yeah, you could stage video, but you could stage writing. Do you think people are 100% authentic in their writing? No, they're not. Not to mention how long does it take you to actually write out your thoughts versus when you're thinking them. If you're doing a video, it's instantaneous. I think it, I say it, it happened. I have it recorded, it's documented. Not to mention tape has always been used in research as long as technologically advanced so, you know, was available. But when we do focus groups, when we do interviews, when we do Zoom calls, we record everything. Tape has always been part of it. So it's disingenuous for an academic to look down on vlogging or video diaries because it doesn't conform to their ideas of academic standards. In addition, I also got dinged because I've been doing research for seven years and I have other thematic codes that I've used for academia. And the idea in academia is, oh, oh, oh my God, every research project is in a vacuum and you start from scratch every time, bullshit. I'm an intersectional scholar. That tells me that all of my past experiences, all my lived experiences with discrimination, with race, with class, with intersectionality, with gender, with violence, probably are gonna reoccur again. So for me to say that I'm gonna use thematic codes from, pro from um, projects from before is perfectly sane. And for a person of color, let's be honest, we have to jump through more hoops than white people in academia. But that person looked down on me like I was cheating. Oh, you're cheating. You're going to use old codes. That's BS family, because anyone with a critical brain in their body knows that we used our previous knowledge, funds of knowledge, actually, thank you all, as a basis for our research. So don't look down on me for pulling from my previous research history, because I have been doing this for a really long time. In addition to that family, they literally said, who do you think you are to have your own theory, right? Who are you to have a critical race theory? Well, I will tell you who I am. I have been a mentor for the Critical Race Society, Critical Race Studies and Education Association, CRSEA.org family. 
and a leader for them since 2016. I ran the conference that we hosted in 2018. I became a Ujima mentor when I applied for the program as a doctoral candidate family. They made me a mentor. I am recognized by my own field as a leader and a mentor. So I'll be damned if I let someone else from another field say, who are you to add the CRT? I've been adding the CRT. I have already been recognized. You need to you do your research and figure out who I am. Drop mic. I'm still mad, family. I feel like all that stress yoga didn't really help me. I'm tired of being talked down to because what I don't know my place yet because I don't have the PhD yet because I am not a theorist according to you because I haven't um, talked about Foucault and Freire and used all the established um yeah okay so Freire had a lot of white privilege family he might have been uh, what was he from Brazil was Brazil but I'm tired of men in academia telling me what's what <sighs> no that will not happen anymore i define my work i define what should be happening in white allyship that's my work family i work with white people i define what happens in crt work because i am a crt scholar i define what happens in intersectional work because it's always part of my analysis any analysis that is not an intersectional family is not a complete analysis you always and forever have to include factors of race, class, language, citizenship, um, gender, sexuality, all of those things matter in every single interaction, and it is naive to think otherwise. And unethical. You can have two people going up for the same thing and saying, oh, yeah, this person who's obviously wealthy, obviously has had um, the opportunities educationally that a poor person from this community could not even access or hope for. Those are not fair. Right. But the United States is an expert at creating a rubric and telling you why you have failed. That's why I'm here to destroy a family. I am here to create something new and start the revolution. Don't forget. Public revolt forever. <laughs> Thanks for listening to me. I'm really angry, family. I'm angry. Rah. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to send any angry emails. That's always my advice to all my clients, to my families and friends, to everyone I've ever supported, is don't send emails angry. But I do it all the time. But I'm not going to do it this time. <laughs> Depends on the advocacy. All right. I love you. I'm off to guys trouble somewhere else.